out of neutral spine, you know, if they were slightly flipped. Or uh -huh. So you could see the relative organization of their head and neck. Uh -huh. Do you want to write, Jim, for me? Uh, okay, so, okay. Rel okay, relative organization. I'm going to do some abbreviations of head, neck, chin. So, what were you seeing there that gave you that information? You're showing me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, in both cases with us, the chin was just ever so slightly down towards the chest. and So, so chin, direction. Yeah. You notice direction of the chin. Yeah. Okay. So and curvature of that cervical spine at the back. So curvature is? Flexion. Uh-huh. So curvature. When we're talking about a curvature, like banana in pyjamas, has a shape. Yeah. Curve is a shape. So what you're seeing is shape of a curve and diff curves are different. That makes sense? Yeah. Yep. Great. Uh, Curva <laughs> so curvature, shape of neck. Yep. I guess how the head support affected the alignment. Ooh, height um, of so head so support. So if there wasn't enough under the head, it would definitely ripple all the way down. Great. Height. <laughs> yep. Height well, of and, head and, support, influence and, on spine. Yeah. And even um, support between the knees uh, ah. was another thing as well. So what did that affect? Uh, what did you notice that made you think of putting support between the knees? Height of head support. Um, I don't know, actually. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah, it was Sue, isn't it? Yeah, Sue lay down as she would sleep, and the... Um, mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Ah, so... <laughs> so we so replaced Sue's hands with uh, a, a, uh, a piece of foam, mm -hmm. and it came up nice for her. So what? So why was it nice? <laughs> so you absolutely know it's it. There's some. It can affect the spine, but you see, most people the hip joint is higher than the knee. So when you put something underneath the knee. You're making the, you're bringing the hip joint to a more neutral position. Yeah. So what you're seeing is a relative height difference between the hip joint, what you saw, and the knee relative to the floor. So you're creating a more comfortable position. Is that something you should look for in, in clients? That's what we're doing this yeah. for. So you will have more means to know what is comfortable and less comfortable with people. Yes. Yes. I, I, Generally speaking, would you put something between the knees? Yeah. I would, s yes, say yes. Mm -hmm. More often than not. Might be influenced by how long you're going to stay there or how long the person is going to stay there if they're a child. Yes. The reason being, this is higher, this is lower. So it may be if there's holding here that the weight of the leg dragging downwards relative to the hip is creating some tendency, tension around the hip. So this will, can you see if the muscles are going like this and I'm short? and the leg is down, they can't lengthen. So it may create an, all sorts of little symptoms, but you bring that up and all of a sudden there's these tissues are no longer on 
a passive stretch. Uh, by the way, I've had leg. a bad night's sleep on my side. I'll wake up sore here and down here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So height of head support influence on line of spine. And I think I forgot to put height. Just a moment. I just I forgot to put height of hip relative to height of knee. Height of hip joint relative relative to height of knee. Getting more and more. Okay. Uh, it's over here. Oh, Helen, can I go first or do you want to have the ball? Uh, so uh, as well as curvature of the neck mm -hmm. or relative, relative organisation of the head, uh, we observed um, the turning of the head as well so turning turning towards the pillow i guess mm -hmm. so the say. and then that brought the shoulder forward as well uh -huh. um so observation so turning again is a direction so if we're looking for broad categories it could be that you're at, i mean it is that you notice the turning but it's a direction. Yeah. So I, um, I'm going to put the turning of the head. Turning of head. But again, so directions could be downwards. Mm. And we, what was the direction downwards here was in relationship to, to the chin. That was to the to the sternum so yes that's downwards turning that yeah, thank you yeah. so direction left right thank you jenny brains fuzzy left right yep turning up head oh, i just uh, wanted to add another word to the orientation of the head um which may have may or may not have meaning to others uh just trajectory or direction uh -huh. of the um the cervical spine and the head rather i mean in addition to observation of curvature and shape of neck can you show me what you mean please yeah or with someone if it was one of your group that you noticed do they do you mind showing us Mm -hmm. That's all I meant. Yep. That's okay. No, no, it's it's quite a good distinction. So can you see what Helen's talking about? We're talking about that we have a line of the spine and we have a line of the cervical spine, which is it does have an orientation, it's more forwards in space. And I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't think of it as having as a trajectory because it's not actually moving. But if she, direction, yes, yes, great. Similar. Could or, it, each person can do it with their own nuance. But that may make a difference. What about if you put another pad under her head? So what, what we could say also about that orientation is, have you heard the word congruent and incongruent? So now, so you just put more padding under her head. That was all. So that's more congruent in terms of being in a neutral position, lying on her side.
Whereas before, if the, if the cervical spine is moved in one direction, is at an angle to the rest of the spine, it's less neutral, though she's changing. Yeah, thank you. Tuck it under. Yes. So having her, having her spine in line here means that her, her whole spine has to lengthen the height of her shoulder girdle and her ribs. So by bringing her head forwards, she can rotate a little bit more and she's coming forwards of the highest point of her ribcage. Her head is forwards of the broadest part of her ribcage. So it's less distance for her head to be on the floor. Could be, could be. I would suspect so, but I don't actually know. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's stay on topic. Do you want um, that or are you going to sit up? The other observation was in, in terms of that, the head alignment was the positioning of the arms was relative uh, helped you look at how they stacked the um the shoulder girdle mm -hmm. and then how they use the arms to to either or keep themselves in a sense of al alignment uh, through the through the axis as well as that's a lot <laughs> so i'm going to start with um uh, uh, so configuration yeah. So you're happy with configuration? It means the arrangement of the limbs? Balance or, okay, configuration of arms? Left and right, yeah. Yes. yes, configuration arms. In, so the influence. Yep. Props you. Yeah. Influence yeah. of. Propping. Aiding. <laughs> <laughs> Weight. What's that? Contributing to rolling. Oh, yeah, yeah, more pillow. I, I normally have more pillow. But I think, oh. I think that's when, when, when I do that, I think that's to open up my chest so that I can breathe. So we can make up all sorts of reasons for why, but that's actually what, at the moment, we're not kind of going into that level of complexity. We're going into what can we see. So you, you're doing fantastically. Ankles. Really sharp angles of the neck. Angles. Sorry, I heard. Angles. Ankles. Ankles. Angles. Angles. I think we need a new ankle fetish. Hands. Okay. Yeah, rotation of the of the rib cage for over. Shoulder, Angles. girdle, over. Just general rotation. Rotation. What? If we, were, if we were insects, yes, we wouldn't have a rotation problem. thought we could just go like that. What else? <laughs> Do you want... No, I don't. Here? Could we have it here, please? Thank you. I was just going to add something that... I actually had to verify with my fingers. Uh, uh huh. Um, so it wasn't so, just a look. <laughs> so looking at the spine, sometimes if I just, and it might just be because of my experience now, um, just looking 
at the person's shape and kind of guessing where the spine was before I then went and touched to check where it was. If the person's body shape was a bit more angular, my first reading of it was that maybe there was a bit more curvature. And then when I went to track the spine with my fingers, sometimes it was, it was a lot straighter than I thought. Mm -hmm. So we will use all the means available to us and you'll learn to develop those means. So eyes, touch, voice to gather information. So yes, this time, for this particular purpose, we were just gathering, seeing what sorts of things can we see? So, anything else? <laughs> I didn't see this, but other people in my group did. Which Great, I speak was, up for them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They saw the, just the movement with the breath. Great. Right down to the legs or something. Oh. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see it. No, I'm going well, the other thing that <laughs> that developing this and hearing what others see, other people see, is that you develop the possibility there's a lot more to see than what you see, because we tend to see a particular perspective. We tend to notice certain things that are habitual to us, and we don't even notice that our noticing is habitual. Did you have something to say? Yeah, no. I think I saw a relationship between if one foot was over the other uh -huh. or something, but instead of the stacking, the opposite. So was crossing the, of yeah, body parts. Crossing and a little bit of like a spinal twisty kind of thing going mm -hmm. on, like almost looking like a twist, a stretching twist, like a mm -hmm. half so helix put or something. Twist there. In the lower, lower. And when you say crossing of the legs, I th you could. You could say that's a configuration or it's a position, it's isn't it? It's kind of like what we're doing in the lessons, like, yeah. except lying down. Just like. so a configuration of arms, configuration of legs. I know, it kind of, I know you could kind of just see. Yes. Doing. So you're, in, you're like a thinking twist. is that the weight of the leg is tending to draw the spine forwards. Yeah, like the, yeah, the weight mm -hmm. of the leg and this being over the top and then, you know, just kind of like the dead bird mm -hmm. pose but lying down almost. So when there is a weight of, uh, when there is a body part, you, you can put an arrow on it to imagine a direction that might tend to tell you what it's doing but you've got to be careful not to assume it. Yeah, I thought like I'm trying to use mm -hmm. language. You are doing very well. Yeah, like the re yeah, just a relationship between mm -hmm. having yes the stack position or the stack position. Which yes, kind of it's a similar idea here. Weight contributing to rolling forward. Yeah, pretty much. Except or twist. Except, yeah, or that's twist. It. Yeah, so we, beautiful. Just line between those two or something. No, do that. Anything else? So we. Yes. Um, the other thing is, these guys noticed on me, is that if I change sides, I lay differently. Oh. Yeah. Oh, next time I'll do that too. That would have been, <laughs> yes, different way. And I heard some, thank you, of, I heard something from a group over here that isn't on the board yet, different way of lying on each side. Uh huh. So, what are you seeing there? You're seeing a relationship between the. More of a. On one side, the, the distance between the hips and the shoulder were closer. Yeah. So, so did was... you compare it to the other side, or was it one person compared to another? No, I could just literally see. One bum cheek, like, more. Up? So more up. Okay. One bum cheek, more up. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that, An again, is a direction. Language. Can I put that in a direction? Uh, it's actually side bending. Yeah, side bending. <laughs> well, one buttock is more towards the head. One sit bone is more towards the head than the other one. Yeah. That's, but I'm going to put side bending. So side bending. And, but also, 
it's the relationship of pelvis to ribs, mm. the length, so direction, it's a length that you're noticing, lengths or distances. And, and you can see the, the shoulder was Dis doing the same Lengths thing and well. distances. Do you get that? Does everybody understand what I'm, I don't want to write it down if you don't understand it. Lengths and distances. So there's this length that you can notice or this length that you can notice. Lengths, distances, relationship, pelvis, ribs. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Box over there. Uh, so uh, we noticed that um, the direct, the extent to which you had your legs to a ninety degree or not, um, uh, with one person, if, if neither of the two people that I observed at first had their legs at, in the same ideal position as you had set up, Stephanie. Yeah. But that's obviously what was comfortable for them. Mm -hmm. But as as the legs were put more into that 90 degree, it actually pulled the pelvis forward mm -hmm. and reduced the, what, what I think was their natural curvature of their spine to keep them comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then, so it was more comfortable. It, this didn't have anything to do with stacking the hips or the shoulders. In fact, it was just, it brought the whole It was a change in the configuration. It was yeah. a change in an angle that made a difference, yeah, more comfortable yeah, difference, it, but it influenced no, the curve, not, not necessarily. Difference. No, no. Okay, so it, good. It, it flattened the curve. And, but and because a curve is flattened doesn't necessarily mean it's less comfortable or more no, no, comfortable. No, 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 no. Yeah. sorry, it just was it just, less it stable was a, in this case. Less stable, okay. Person. Relationship of leg position, leg position to legs, that's good. Um, <laughs> leg position to hips. pelvis orientation yeah. because here you're talking about That's right. a, yeah. a, a, a tilting backwards or yes. forwards of the pelvis, yes. which it has an orientation to it, yeah. forwards or backwards, yeah. and the effect on the yeah. curve. Yeah. Leg position to pelvic Not orientation. necessarily, no. No. Okay, last opportunity Sorry. to land something on the board before we finish for the day. Thanks. Um, just adding two things I haven't seen on there. So with the breath, mm -hmm. the movement that you tend to observe or I saw in both the people I was watching was more of a torsional, like a rotational lengthening down through the thigh. Mm. So you different. saw the breath yeah. moving into the thigh. Yeah, it was like as they, so I wouldn't be looking at their trunk. I would, you know, focus down towards the pelvis and I would see that lengthening as they then, as I linked it back to looking at their trunk, it was as they broke, took a breath in. Breathe. There was a, like a lengthening down through the leg, but it was actually rotational. It was as if you could see it like rotating inwards as they breathed in. Can you and show then, me on the skeleton, please? Oh, God. Move. Lengthening. As <laughs> well, it's a, it's a movement while he yeah. breathes. So that's, I just wanted to get, if I'm understanding her. As they inhaled, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, moved lengthening. Whoops. And then lengthening. Also... Influence. I'm going to put influence. Yeah. And then I used watching the breath to sort of start getting a relationship about where it looked like they were, based on their alignment as well, a sense of where I felt they were hanging or holding on or pulling or pushing mm -hmm. in terms of that yeah, relationship of left on top of right or right on top of left. How would you like me? To write that. <laughs> Influence on, on tensile, on influence on structures. <laughs> on leg structures. Well, we have to put the movement in there. So breathing is an action with movement and it 
that it influenced. So I could write every detail down, but we're looking at the influence of breathing on structures and their movement, maybe that and their movement. It, there was a response. Yeah. Okay. Good job. To be continued. Great observations. I wonder what you what, I wonder what you'll observe as you go home tonight. <laughs> More maybe? More? <laughs> Less particulars. <laughs>